The first thing I did before I stepped on the uh, podium here to see whether I have an emergency exit behind me. And the, the reason for that is that some may perceive this talk as a um, destructive critique to their practice. In fact, what it is, it is a plea to all the radiologists, from us, the practicing obstetricians, to listen to some of the issues that we face reading a report. The report can be an ultrasound report, but it also applies to a CT as well as an MRI report. I should have called really this talk as the title of my editorial article that uh, Beryl Benasraf was so gracious to accept and publish several months ago, the complexity of a complex mass and the simplicity of a simple cyst. And let me cut into it right away. Gyne gynecologic ultrasound made considerable strides in the last 20 years. Resolution of abdominal transducers increased. High frequency, even high resolution transvaginal probes were introduced. And this article appeared in 1998 and it said transvaginal is better than transabdominal. A non-diagnostic transabdominal is not a reasonable endpoint. Appeared in radiology. Correlations of ultrasound pictures with pathologic findings have led to a better understanding of adnexal pathology. Scoring systems have been developed to define ovarian lesions. Color and power Doppler flow is used lately. In short, the field collectively follow the learning curve the same way individuals do. Now there is a disheartening fact and despite these achievements, ultrasound reports that may have been appropriate for 20 years ago when resolution was more limited are still often sent to the referring physician. An example, a left adnexal complex mass measuring so and so was seen. Impression, one, two, X, Y, Z, etc. And then ovarian neoplasia cannot be ruled out. Another example, complex mass in the cul-de-sac measuring four by four, three, two were seen. Impression, there is a list of three to four differential diagnoses. In spite of the fact that all of you know what this is, and it is says ovarian neoplasia cannot completely be ruled out, suggest follow-up scan as clinically indicated. And another example, complex cystic mass was seen, impression, list of three to four differential diagnoses, ovarian neoplasia cannot completely be ruled out. Here is the question. What should the poor referring OBGYN provider do reading such a report? Should he take the report right to the, the, the OR, put it on the operating table, take a scalpel and make a cut on it? Because that's what it means. When these adnexal masses were palpated by us, the gynecologist, we knew all too well the differential diagnosis pertaining to the findings, including the possibility of cancer. The patient was sent for the scan for help in the diagnostic process, not for the purpose of reading the list of diagnoses he or she knew in the first place. Imaging laboratories, ultrasound units in general, and sonologists in particular can and should often do better much of the time. Let's first tackle the issue of the word complex mass. What is a complex? I went to the Stedman's Medical Dictionary, structural anatomic entity made up of three or more interrelated parts. 
and the second, several lines down, an informal term used to denote a group of individual structures known or believed to be anatomically, embryological, physiologically related. Without the detailed description of the sono components of the lesion denoted complex mass, this word is absolutely meaningless since it includes innocent physiologic findings, benign as well as malignant lesions, without adequate characterization, and its use is harmful, especially if coupled with the word neoplasia, which is almost there at the end of almost every report to understandably cover the legal aspect of every single report. Many such patients are given additional and unnecessary imaging tests what do you want for an endometrioma to be imaged in a different modality? Many undergo unnecessary invasive tests, and many, and I've seen absolutely many of them, taken to the operating room where the reason was a corpus luteum described in the wrong way. Complex mass, a malignancy cannot be ruled out. The problem, many laboratories do not characterize the next ovarian findings. Several scoring systems were developed. Even if they are not employed, the building blocks of these systems are useful in defining such pathologies. Let's see what the morphologic building blocks are. Wall thickness, it can be thin or thick, loculations, multilocular, unilocular, papillations, yes or no, Echogenicity, they can be sonolucent, low level, high echogen, solid. Bizarre appearances, some of them cancer. These are the blo building blocks that you can see. Shadowing, distinguishing between a um, teratoma and the, and, the, and the more important lesion. Now the rationale behind the scoring system is to translate the macroscopic and clinical features to sonographically recognizable features, and all or most of them use the ones that I showed you before, and some add size, ascites, age, and so forth. And here is one of them that we did at Columbia Presbyterian, um, uh, and, and uh, today it is, it's used as the golden standard in the world, and every single scoring system today is compared to this one. However, you can also do subjective evaluation, and several articles recognized that these or so, some, such of subjective evaluations were found to be superior to scoring systems. So you can do uh, an evaluation just by looking it. Now here are, here are the things that I would like you to take to heart, and once again, it's a plea, it's not a criticism. If you really wish to, to use the word complex, please, Follow it up and describe its appearance in the terms that I showed you before. Many laboratories do not relate to signs, symptoms, menstrual status, hormonal treatment. Suggestion, never read a sonogram as without asking for symptoms. Two, a large asymptomatic simple appearance is benign. Don't say that malignancy cannot be ruled out. 0.3% may be malignant. Only. The same cyst, if painful, is a twisted cyst, therefore it's an emergency. Another suggestion, know the menstruating patient's day of the cycle. Avoid the confusion with the corpus luteum. And type in the LMP to appear on every single picture. Another, I will show you that feature in a second. Postmenopausal patients may have some ovarian activity, therefore ask for any hormonal treatment. The information is usually not given by the MD. The referring slips are absolutely useless, and that's absolutely our fault, the obstetricians, gynecologists. Absolutely, totally useless. They say, scan. <laughs> For some time at Columbia Presbyterian, I issued a report and it said, I scanned until the legal department got on my case and says, you cannot even joke on these things. So I am very that serious, you see my face. Ask for previous surgeries, hysterectomies or PID. And if you really wish 
to use the word complex, evaluate the structure in the context of the symptoms, signs, age, and the menstrual cycle. Here it is a patient that is 28, she's in the reproductive age. All my sonographers have to put in the LMP on a place that is not erasable by the freeze on freeze button. If they don't do it, I penalize them. That is serious. Then you have the date, fortunately given by the machine, you don't have to do anything. So she's on day 18 of the cycle. Then switch on the Doppler in this case, and you will see the typical um, power Doppler feature of what? A corpus luteum. There is no differential diagnosis here. And if still you are not sure, risk in the next cycle on days five to nine. But do not say, please do not say malignancy cannot be ruled out. This is a corpus luteum. Other problem, many laboratories do not use color. Well, evaluate the blood flow in these terms of RI, PI, peak systolic velocity. But if you already wish to use the word complex and you do not believe anymore in the RI and the PI, and some of us don't anymore, then please evaluate the blood vessels in terms of the qualitative description location. Is it central in that lesion or peripheral? The calibers, is it even or changing calibers? Tortuosity, lakes, bizarre patterns, and lately, power Doppler angiogram, and I showed you some examples in my previous talk. Here's the right ovary, day 17, what is it? Well, could be cancer, could be, absolutely, but you turn on the color, you have the diagnosis. It is clearly a corpus luteum. In short, the term complex mass should never be used undefined or if a clear diagnosis can substitute for it. Let's use the word cyst. What is a cyst? Again, Stedman Dictionary, an abnormal sac containing gas, fluid, or a semi-solid material with membranous lining. In the minds of most or all obstetricians, gynecologists, rightfully, it denotes disease. The same is true for patients. If you mislabel a follicle or corpulutum and you call it a cyst, which are the two most common examples of this misnomer, the patient will remember this diagnosis and in the future refer to it as a patholo pathologic finding misleading herself and every subsequent physician, including you guys, because she, she will tell you, I had a cyst, and then you are in for a half an hour search for a cyst that was never a cyst. Follicles are normal physiologic ovarian structures in the reproductive years. They should be called follicles, not ovarian cysts and not follicular cysts but simply follicles. That's what they are. And they, again, the corpus luteum is a normal physiologic ovarian structures. In the it should be called corpus luteum, or the most I would allow hemorrhagic corpus luteum, avoiding the unnecessary word cyst, definitely if they are not larger than five centimeters. And you have seen them. I call them the corpus luteum, the big pretender, because they look different in different patients all the time. During the normal cycle, there is one or more. Don't call them cysts. They are really follicles. Now, they are physiologic cysts of the ovary. After ovulation, you have the corpus luteum. You have a mesh of blood vessels, as I showed you. It may reach about 2.5 centimeters, very rarely more. Hyperstimulated ovaries, you may have more than one corpus luteum. They, uh, then you have a problem, definitely, when you want to rule out ectopic pregnancy. Color helps. I showed you that. And once again, and probably the fifth time now, don't call them cysts. They are corpora lutea. In the secretory phase of the cycle, avoid drawing conclusions in case of an external mass workup. Rescan on days five to 10 of a subsequent cycle. If such a patient is referred to our unit and she is on day 19, 20, 25, and she was sent rule out uh, ovarian malignancy or rule out ovarian pathology, we reschedule that patient. 
Now here are the most common cysts. They are functional and non-functional, and I will go through all of them again. Except the endometrioma here, these resolve and don't need surgical treatment, provided no torsion is there. Describe the characteristics, and if in doubt, again, call the patient back in the next cycle. Here is the simple cyst. Sizes may go up to five centimeters. They have smooth walls, no papillae, unilocular, lined with flat granulosa cells. You don't see that with ultrasound, but the first two you do. Almost never malignant, even less than half of 1%. You can do a, an MRI workup for $1,000 instead of a $100 ultrasound. That's what we get from the companies. These resolve and don't need surgical treatment, provided no rupture or torsion occurs. Now, here is the thing that I also do. Again, the last menstrual period is there. The date is there. Therefore, the two yield day five of the cycle. Evaluate the picture accordingly. Simple appearing cysts, thin walled, unilocular, anechoic, without papillae, that's what I put in the report. Exactly these words. Less than six centimeters are virtually never malignant and should be followed. The sentence malignancy cannot be ruled out, should not be added at the end of the report. Here is the corpus luteum, I talked about it. Here are some other functional cysts, the tecalutein cysts. The sizes may go up to five centime 10 centimeters. They are thick wall, multilocular. You will know because they were hyperstimulated. They occur in diabetes, smaller pregnancies, pregnancies with hydrophytalis and hormonal treatment. And once again, uh, pergonal, typical multicystic, clomid, typical only one or two large uh, follicles that were, that were uh, that are obtained. This is how they look when you uh, look at the specimen. Um, serosins, they are non-functional, and the sizes may go up to four centimeters. They have smooth wall, they are unilocular, no papillae. They occur mostly in the menopause, and Dr. Gosink in, in uh, uh, the West Coast and Steve Goldstein said that you can follow them. Most of them also disappear and they do not need surgical treatment. Endometriomas, these are also well recognizable, rarely septated, thick walled usually, homogeneous low level echo field, rarely vessels go through it. And here you can see that they may be large, over 10 centimeters. They are also called chocolate cysts, but that's only when you operate. You cannot see that with ultrasound, of course rarely become malignant. If they do, and that's about 0.2%, they are called endometrioid or clear cell carcinoma, and you can recognize them readily by having this picture here with several papillae protruding from the wall, which have ample blood vessels. Don't say that these are malignancy cannot be ruled out. Say endometrioma. That's what the obstetrician needs. He knows that it could be in 0.2% cancer. You can do an MRI, another thousand dollars. You don't need it. It's, it's superfluous. Paraovarian cyst and hyperstimulation of the ovaries I talked about. Polycystic ovaries are easy to recognize, uh, easy to report, no problem. Benign ovarian tumors. Dermoids, cystic solid fibromas, the most tricky uh, structure that you have, and I will show you some of them. The, der the dermoids have bizarre appearances. They have this hyperechoic plug, speckled echoes, very rarely have blood vessels. Most of the time they don't. Virtually all are benign and can easily be, be overread and scored as malignant. Pay attention and diagnose them readily. These do not resolve. They need surgery most of the time. They may also twist. Here are some of them. Most of them have uh, some kind of, some degree of uh, shadowing. They may have this Rokitansky protuberance, the plug in there, three-dimensional ultrasound can see them pretty well. This is one that we had uh, several months ago. Here are the little uh, sebaceous and hair 
bubbles, hair uh, uh, globules that they have. Fibromas are tricky. Fibromas are tricky because you will see a papilla, which will be hyperechoic in 60% of the cases in the, in the cystic uh, fibromas, not in the solid ones. No vessels are ever seen. I'm, I'm now uh, following at least 15 or 20 such patients from one six months to another six months and already more than two years in several cases. There is sonolucent fluid or anechoic fluid, unilocular, thin wall in 50% of the cases. They grow very slowly. If you operate, you see this cauliflower uh, type protru uh, protrusions, no blood vessels seen. They are solid like stone. You can follow them provided no torsion occurs. Cystadenomas are easy to recognize and once again easily reported and diagnosed. The septae are usually fanning out from one point. There is no shadowing. They are anechoic, the serous ones, or low level echogenic, the mucinous ones, and there are very few blood vessels in them. And once again, the, um, Looking at the uh, characteristics of the blood vessels, it's uh, very hard to see them. Once again, uh, the last thing, the papilla, and I uh, already showed you that before, you always search for blood vessels. If you have blood vessels in the, in the, in the area of the papilla, that's very strongly suggestive of malignancy, as it was in this case. So, one more word about cancer. Cancer is a very, um, very seldom occurrence. It's, it's not prevalent. And um, size definitely matters in this world of Rulin and Preston. Uh, the large sizes had more malignancies than the small ones. 70% of the neoplasma are in the premenopause. Of these, only 13% malignant. 75% of malignant neoplasm are in the menopause. The point is, common things are common and rare things are rare. So we usually say, our level of suspicion for malignancy, that's what I say in our reports, is very low or extremely low, is moderate, and I suggest one, two, or three, or it's very high. Or I can say, our level of suspicion for malignancy cannot be determined at this time. What do I suggest? Additional imaging techniques or come back in some time. Please suggest other imaging, but only if you are sure that they add to the diagnostic process. To close, we have to admit there are problems in scanning and reporting at Nexel findings. Some sonographers and sonologists already image and report the way we think is appropriate. We simply want those who still report the way they did years ago to follow the field's learning curve. Where the wording reports has far-reaching clinical as well as financial consequences. Ultimately, change will come about by the way we teach residents, give lectures, and write articles. The problem may be complex, however, the solution appears to be simple. Don't disappoint the obstetricians.